and this was the last meal I'm going to have for the next 14 days. That's right, I'm doing something called an extended water fast, which is no food, just water for the next 14 days. Why? Well, yes, burning some of this um, excess body fat is kind of nice, but actually not eating comes with its own host of health benefits, a lot of them. And over the last five years or so, I've done enough fasts, both intermittent fasting, which is when you have an eating window of just a couple of hours per day. So for instance, you don't eat for 16 hours and then you eat for the next eight. Um, and extended fasts of say five to 10 days where yes, it's just you and H2O to be able to reap those health benefits confidently without possibly stumbling into a lot of the drawbacks. And I figured I'd use this video not just to take a break from food, but also what things to look out for to make taking a break from food as comfortable as possible for you. What you surprisingly can do while you're taking a break from food. And, well, anything else that pops up in all of this spare time that I now have over the next two weeks because I'm not sourcing food or cooking food or eating food or cleaning up after cooking food. So yeah, I actually just hit the 24 hour mark, so 312 hours to go. The first thing that I should start out with actually is some caveats to whether or not you should consider fasting. Well, okay, caveat one is that I am not a medical doctor and if you have any underlying health conditions, you should probably not do a extended fast without consulting your primary physician first. For me, I'm healthy and able. I've had comprehensive checkups about every year. I actually have to get one for my work visa and I'm considered in the normal range for just about every metric out there. Mm. Well, Chinese doctors tell me I'm too fat, but you know, East Asia, what are you gonna do? I also don't take any medications. If you take some for even something like depression, it's definitely worth talking to somebody who has more medical knowledge than us plebs uh, whether or not this is the right thing for you to do. Caveat too is if you want your body to grow in some way, for instance you're a bodybuilder or you're pregnant or you're a teenager, this is not the experiment for you to try. Obviously, if you are not bringing in nutrients, it's going to be very hard for your body to build you into something else. While the idea that you're going to lose a lot of muscle while not eating is kind of a myth, at the same time, because you're not bringing in a lot of nutrients, there's not a lot of nutrients to build new muscle with. That sounds kind of obvious when you think about it. And the third caveat is don't go into this if you suspect you have an eating disorder. If you have a sensitive relationship with food, you should really work on that first before attempting to do something that requires so much specific control around food. Ultimately, what I'm doing this for is because it benefits me in this holistically positive way. Yes, obviously it does help with losing weight, but I know that that's temporary. My body usually bounces back to this in about two or three months afterwards. More importantly, these extended fasts have become this way for me to marvel at the survivability of my own body and to remind myself to think of food more in a nutritious sense rather than what it sometimes turns into for me, which is a way to relieve boredom possibly a way to squash certain bad feelings down. This puts me into the space where I'm given this time to think about things a little more. Anyway, I'll probably get into it in the rest of this video, which is going to be a little bit of a diary of the next, now 13 days. Um, so yeah, watch what Elaine is eating, which is nothing. <laughs> Our 
weight of this fast. And one of the things that happens when I start fasting is I kind of turn into a workhorse. So as you can see, I'm actually the last person in this entire WeWork. Ah, gives me kind of a nice place to film from, huh? So why even fast to begin with? Well, even before that actually, what is fasting? Well, technically speaking, fasting is your metabolic state after your body has finished digestion and absorption of the last meal. Something that happens like four hours after you last stopped eating. If you're normal, you will enter a fasted state pretty naturally every day. Um, after going to bed, if you sleep in bed for eight hours, you should be in a fasted state when you wake up. That's why they call it breakfast. The theory behind water fasting, or really any kind of fasting that's outside of the norm of eating three meals a day, is that human bodies are not actually meant to be grazers. And this modern lifestyle of always having food available is actually one of the reasons why we are having so much trouble not being obese. So I won't go into too many of the details about it because there are millions of YouTube videos that already do that. They talk about mitochondria and immunity responses and rat experiments and so on. But if I were to sum it all up, I would say the main culprit seems to be insulin. That's the hormone in your body that tells you to grab up all of that energy, aka food, aka mostly glucose, and stuff it into your cells for storage. When it drops because there is no more glucose to grab up, that's usually the signal for your body to begin using the energy that it's just stored. And maybe also start hunting for more energy giving materials, aka more glucose, but it doesn't have to be just glucose. But if we're constantly eating, our insulin levels don't actually get the chance to drop and we don't get the signal to start burning what we already have. In fact, because there's so much glucose in our bloodstream, we produce more insulin to try to grab it up. But then that makes it take even longer for the insulin to clear and signal us to start using our reserves and that is called um, insulin insensitivity. Assuming you don't have any insulin related problems like diabetes though, uh, you don't actually have to go on this kind of big extended fast in order to get insulin sensitive again. Usually 12 hour fasts a day is enough for your body to start working its way back to normal levels. But not only does fasting control things like insulin, it's also good for your heart because it lowers your cholesterol and it's said to trigger this process called autophagy, 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 autophagy. I've only ever seen it written, I've never seen it pronounced. It's when your body begins to prioritize utilizing worn out cells to generate new ones, kind of like a recycling service. And while the science is not completely solid on this, this process may actually do everything from prevent cancer to stop Alzheimer's. To be honest, being a big fan of sustainability and recycling and any concept of material efficiency, this was the thing when I first heard it, when I first heard about fasting that made me go, God, I gotta try this. Anyway, it is a little lonely here, so I'm gonna take a jaunt home. Not that there's really much to do there that I can't do on a couch over here since it's not like I'm eating. Alright, so I woke up this morning feeling a little sluggish, which is pretty normal for day four, but you know, drank an iced coffee and powered through and now three meetings later, I think I'm doing okay. It's day five and I'm celebrating the 100 hour mark of this fast by taking a little stroll in the middle of the work day. You know, since I don't have a lunch to eat on lunch break, I might as well walk. Typically days three, four, and five tend to be the hardest to get through on these extended fasts, but this time I've actually been watching my electrolytes and my water intake and so I haven't been suffering too badly. My sleeping is still kind of erratic. I went to bed at 2 a.m. last night and then had to wake up at 7 and it was a struggle. But other than that, I don't feel hungry and I don't feel like I lack too much energy either. Granted, not lacking energy has not gotten me to exercise, so that's also one of the reasons why I'm taking a walk right now. I have not been exercising very much. But 
I figure maybe this is a good time for me to give you guys some tips on how to make these kinds of extended fasts easier. The first tip is to stay hydrated. It's amazing how much water content we get from the foods that we eat, and since you're not eating anything, you really need to up your water intake. For someone around my size, two liters is the minimum that I should be drinking per day. And the bigger you are, the more water you need just to keep your body functioning. To ensure that I was getting what I needed every morning, I measured out two liters of water in bottles. Yes, wine bottles, because reuse, recycle, baby and committed to emptying them by the end of the day. Having water on hand to drink does also help you resist food. Like on day six, when at one of the events, there was free dumplings for dinner and I just uh, drank a lot of water. I don't know how many times I've seen people talk about being woozy and lightheaded and feeling absolutely terrible on a fast, and most of the time it's because they vastly underestimated their electrolytes. I've made this mistake a lot previously as well, but this time around, I insisted I make sure that I got the sodium and potassium levels I needed. Reddit has this great little FAQ that basically says that you need at least around three grams of each. This is because as your body runs out of glycogen, it stops retaining water. With that water comes out all of your salts, which incidentally your body needs to function but can't produce on its own. Normally, just by eating regular foods, you'll get back those salts, sometimes too much of those salts. When you stop eating though, meh. So here's what I've been doing. I have an electrolyte mixed drink called Ultima that contains about 250 milligrams of potassium per spoonful. I use four spoonfuls. I also found a light salt sold here that contains about 1.3 grams of sodium and another 0.5 grams of potassium. So I use three teaspoons of that. This is what the final amount of salts I try to make myself ingest per day looks like. And from that, I create a really salty slush and pour that into my other waters throughout the day. Also though, make sure that when you take this salt slush around, it's in a secure enough bottle because... So we've rounded out the halfway mark and I am officially on day eight of this fast. And I'm feeling a little bittersweet about it because the water bottle that I was only carrying around because I need salt water throughout this entire fast, um, exploded in my bag with my vlogging camera. So my vlogging camera is now destroyed. This was an unintended consequence and a very expensive one. If you do those first two right, you will have more energy than sense. Try not to get too excited about how much more fuel you have and forget to sleep. This is something that I've been telling myself constantly because I've been logging stupid long hours at the office this entire time pushing through multiple projects, both work and personal and, um, you know, my volunteer work. And sometimes I will suddenly come around at 2 a.m. and go, oh, goodness sake. I had all of this free time from not cooking or eating or cleaning, and I spent it all on work. Also, the lack of sleep is probably not very good for you. Um, I don't know if I'm developing bags under my eyes, but yeah, uh, I have not been sleeping very much. And finally, dress warm. When you're fasting, you will suddenly feel very cold all the time, especially in your extremities. This is actually because blood is flowing into your fat reserves to pull more energy out of them. It is not, as some men say, because you are losing muscle. So prep for that. I have a fleet shawl at work to help me whenever I'm feeling cold in the office. And nowadays I use a heated electric blanket at night to help keep me warm enough to go to sleep. 
and I've been wearing like warmer clothes in general. The last several times I've gone for fast, I've usually done them in the summertime, so it hasn't been such a problem, but you know, this time I was like, hey, February, what a great time to start. So I'm cold, but it's manageable. Alas, another long day at the office that I'm gonna try to cut short. Okay, we're at the tail end of this fast. It's Friday morning and I've got less than 30 hours to go. So I figured I'd take this time to address mm, some of the myths of fasting that I've heard. This ties in a little bit with the coldness thing because people assume that you're cold during your fast because you're entering something called starvation mode and that tends to freak people out a lot. Starvation mode refers to this idea that when you're not eating any food, your body starts to eat its own muscles, causing you to waste away into nothing. The idea has its roots in the study that was done by the US government back in the 1960s where they took a whole bunch of healthy young gentlemen and put them on an incredibly restricted calorie diet, mostly made out of breadstuffs, and those poor young gentlemen suffered hard for it. There are multiple videos of this on YouTube, so I won't get into too many of the details there, but there's a big difference between what that study is and what this water fast that I'm on is. And part of that is that if you're eating this minimal amount of breadstuffs, that's still enough to keep your insulin spiked so that it's harder for your body to get the signals to pull from your fat reserves. Also, because it was the 1960s, these healthy young gentlemen were probably still on the lower end of the body fat range. Just think about it like this. If you look at the history of human civilization, food security is a relatively recent concept. And yet we have survived many a millennia without being guaranteed three square meals a day. In fact, it was probably very normal where we would have days where we could feast on something, for instance, maybe a mastodon before it spoiled, followed by days where there was really nothing to eat until we could hunt something else down. What's not natural would be to be given an incredibly small amount of, say, oatmeal porridge to eat throughout the day for many, many, many days. Frankly, as long as you are a healthy human with a healthy amount of body fat, about 8% or over for men and 21% or over for women, that fat is the resource that you're gonna be pulling from. So the reason why you're cold on a fast is actually because most of your blood flow is going towards pulling that fat from your cells to be utilized as energy. You do get pretty cold though. The second myth that I've heard is that you can't exercise. Well, contrary to what fancy fasting retreats tell you, actually it's totally fine to exercise on a fast. In fact, it's probably good to get some exercise on a fast because otherwise you're not exercising for many days in a row, which is generally not a good idea for your body whether you're fasting or not. But on the subject of exercise, I found that while I am more or less fine doing some kind of resistance training, I do tend to get kind of lightheaded if I'm doing, say, heavy cardio. So no HIIT classes for me. They are a struggle to get through. I have mostly been doing things like power yoga and body weight exercises at a slow and steady pace. I'm going to admit I haven't exercised as much as I wanted to or had hoped for on this fast, um, but to be fair, I also didn't exercise as much as I wanted to or hoped to um, in the weeks preceding the fast. Basically, I just don't exercise a lot is what I'm saying. Um, my natural state is prone. Uh, anyway, are there any other myths? Let me think. Ah, refeeding syndrome. 
So I see a lot of anxiety from first time fasters who are like, but what do I eat after I haven't eaten for all of these days? And most of them are scared because they think that there is only one right way to eat or else the food that you eat will cause your body to kill you. Well, let's just say the science on this is kind of iffy. In most of the instances where refeeding syndrome was actually dangerous or fatal, the people who experienced it were incredibly malnourished. For instance, they were either anorexic or they had been starving because of some sort of war situation. They would have come in with an intense electrolyte balance and a very, very low percentage of body fat. Eating too much of anything, therefore, would have caused their bodies to do this massive swing in a certain direction, a shock that their weakened states were not uh, ready for. I have been good with my electrolytes this entire time, and even after 13 to 14 days of fasting, I am still not low body fat. So look, if you're doing, say, a three to four day fast, you don't have to worry about this at all. Your body has barely just gotten used to not eating. In fact, you probably just only entered ketosis and are ready to get back out of it again. And while you might feel a little uncomfortably full if you choose to gorge on your first meal, uh, it's not going to do anything terrible to you. There are some fasting experts online that say that you can optimize the effects of your fast for fat burning if you eat something very specific, but well, I'm not a fasting expert or a nutrition expert, so I won't get into that here. What I will say though is I have gone to all you can eat and drink brunches right after a three to four day fast and I have been fine every time. On a longer fast like mine, it's probably not good to say guzzle candy as soon as the timer ticks down to zero. That insulin spike will probably make you feel very uncomfortable and I hear it's not really good to eat anything that's too fibrous or hard to digest because well, this entire system needs a little time to rev up again, you know, get the hormones and the bacteria and the acids working to digest food in the manner that it was doing before. Of course, I've also heard that being on one of these fasts is great for your good gut bacteria because most of your bad gut bacteria dies off thanks to not having its regular sources of highly inflammatory sugars. So maybe, look into the studies on that. I have seen a video from one of these fasting experts that says that it's best to end your fast with a small amount of lean protein an hour before you eat anything else. So in less than 30 hours, I believe the first thing that will touch my lips is probably something from a can of tuna. Okay, I'm probably going to add something to that tuna, maybe some sesame sauce, perhaps a little bit of nori, just to zhuzh it up because otherwise it kind of feels like I'm eating cat food and uh, I'm not a cat. Well, I can spend the next several hours thinking about it, I guess. See you on the flip side. consider it a success. Here's what my stats look like in the end.
As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the weight does in fact start coming back on again once you start eating normally. Um, as much as I was watching my water and my electrolytes, uh, I was still losing a lot of water weight. And so basically in the first week, as soon as I started, you know, munching on noodles and, and buns and all the things that make life worthwhile here in China, um, I gained back a good 3 kg just from retaining water again. However, despite that 3 kg weight gain, my measurements stayed the same, so that's how I know it was all water retention. And in the two months since, uh, I have not really been doing anything uh, particularly special with my diet. I have been trying to exercise a little more, but you know, uh, weeks where that happens more than other weeks. <laughs> and in this, in these two months I have expanded, but definitely not back to where I started from pre-14 day fast. I've got to admit though, even though I do enjoy hanging out with friends now and being able to cook for them and eat their cooking and have, you know, drinks every day of the week, I do really miss that mental clarity that came with the 14 day fast, especially once you got past day three and four. Oh, the relentless energy, while a little disturbing, was just so useful for getting things done. And I think I liked it so much that I might consider doing another longer fast again this year. I keep on getting distracted because, oh, well, it looks like my cat has decided to go into my closet. And since we're now in May and the weather is actually getting uncomfortably hot for me, um, maybe I could use feeling a little chilly again. <laughs> well, I'll make that decision later. The main takeaway here is that I really enjoyed the 14 days that I was fasting. There seems to have been no ill side effects. I lost a decent amount of body fat, but um, but two months later I'm going to strength training classes with uh, no evidence that I lost any muscle. And so, assuming that you are in the group of people that I did not caveat at the beginning of this video, I think you should try it for yourself. If you found this useful, ah, uh, what? If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. You can find me off of YouTube at my website and Instagram. And see you next time doing whatever it is I happen to be doing. Raising cats.